Hey guys, Chip here, and today let's talk about making some kind of really low poly game objects and, and baking some bevels on it and things like that. So let's take a quick look. So here's a cube. I'm gonna just basically take this and we'll create we'll create a kiosk. We'll just grab this and we'll grab the uh, here and control bevel. Just maybe bevel this out as part of the kiosk, and then maybe uh, control R. Let's just put a little area in here and we can take this face right here and uh, let's just alt e and we'll extrude, uh, extrude manifolds we'll stick it back in here like this and we'll grab these two and i'll say alt e and extrude faces along normals and we'll move these out just a little bit just like this and that's really going to be the basic shape of what we're doing and let's create a new material for it. And with Node Wrangler enabled, I'll control T, and that's going to give us these. I'm going to delete these two. Uh, so all I have right here is an image texture. And let's go in and let's find some images. Here's, uh, let's grab this one right here. Yeah, yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so we've got that on here. Let's. We'll see what that looks like. Ah, great. Looks really nice. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll go into UV editing. And what I'll first do is let's uh, control space bar here. And we're going to turn on this view, the uh, viewport shading. And then let's actually, this is this is uh, show overlays. And as you can see, I've got that set to a uh, Q key. So I'll go back out of here. So now I can see this. So here's my image. Here's our object. I'm going to hit A. And uh, over here in U, and I'll, I'll do what's called a cube projection. So that unwraps everything. And then I'll grab this one right here, this top one, and I'll hit the five on my numpad. So I'm uh, in orthographic view, and I'm going to hit Shift 7, numpad 7. And that lines that. So you can see that lines that with, you know, there. So Shift 7. So there it is. So then I'll say U again, and I'll just take that one face, and I'm going to say, project from view so there it is right there so now i can go back over here and i'll just hit seven or something anything so i can see what i'm doing so there we have this i'll go over here and i'll have this this is set so that i'll oh, set it to faces and i'm gonna just hit r and rotate it so you can see what's going on g i'll move it right in the middle here something like this maybe maybe like this yeah and then let's scale it so s for scale so as long as uh, you know do it this way i'm going to get pretty much let's, let's a little bit larger yeah maybe maybe something like that g i'll move it around so i can get kind of a something like that so you can see what we got going on here now i can hit q and i can say show overlays and turn it off and you can see what's see what's going on so that's going to be that image now let's go ahead and let's grab these images these two fronts and so again i'll hit a and let's just scale these down gee let's move them uh well, let's line them up for that that line right there let's grab that line put that there maybe grab these these vertices right here oh, i have to get into vertex mode grab these and say uh, gx and i can move those over so they line up also gx there we go okay so we have these labels some kind of weird labels on it but you can see what we have kind of it all kind of lines up pretty decently there yeah it looks pretty good okay then let's uh, let's grab these side pieces here let's grab both of them actually all, or all four of these and i'm going to just uh scale these down maybe move them down here something like so yeah just leave those like that with some more stickers on them and everything so uh, let's scale them so a little inside that bar. Okay, we'll just leave it like that. Show overlays. You can see what's going on. And then let's grab. I'm going to grab this, 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 this. So this is all that bottom stuff, right? So I'll say A and actually let's just do it this way gee let's just overlap all of them put them all in the same place g g g and then i'll take all of these and say r scale 
T. Let's stick them like over here. Scale T there. Something like that. So, so we have that kind of a darker face. So we have that, and then we have the back and the top to do. Let's go ahead and select the top. Um, and the top, let's rotate it a little bit like this. And I'll move it over here, and maybe we'll line these up. Like so and then move it down a little bit maybe like this so we got some more labels maybe take these and move them down like so or even farther down so yeah so there we have it that's going to be our uh there's our first uv mapping right so we've just uv mapped that uh let's go ahead now and go out in, in uh, regular mode let's, this is, and I'm gonna just basically let's just punch in a couple things right here so I'm gonna tab into this and I'll just hit the K button for knife K A is a line so I'll give us a straight line so I go from here to maybe here down to there over to here and then snap it right there and hit enter and we'll do the same thing over here. K, A for a line, maybe here, here, there. Hit A again, snap it in there, and then hit return. So now I can hit three, grab that face and that face. Hit E, and we're just you're just going to move them in a little bit. So, so that's what we've got. That's our final model. Real simple, not a big deal. So. So now what I want to do is I want to bake a bevel on here, right? So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to go back in here in our model, and let's notice that I want to create a, another UV map that I can use to bake the bevel with. So I'll come over here into the, the uh, vertice area, and under UV maps, I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to highlight that like this. Okay. So, and then I'll go into KitOps bevel, which is right there. And... I'm going to leave just the default settings. should be pretty good for this. It's not very complex. So, and I'll hit this UV unwrap button. Now look, it screws everything up, but it put it in here in this one. This is our default one. So what I want to do is come over here, shift A and on input UV map. I want to basically hook this into this image. Remember, this is that blue image that we were looking at before. Let's hook this up to this, the first one. And now we're back to where we want, but but this is our default one. We're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to use that here in just a second. But now that we've got this done, we want to basically go ahead and preview this and see what I got. So that looks pretty good. I like that. Stop preview, and let's bake the normal for that. And I'm going to I'm going to bake it at, at 4,096, big a large bake because I want a real high quality normal. And I'll I'll I'm going to move it. I'm going to actually downsample it a little later, and I'll show you how I do that. But I'll. Use tangent, object or tangent, doesn't really matter, but tangent will let us see some things a little better. Let's go ahead and hit the bake normal real quick. Okay, so let's go back into UV editing. And what I want to do now is if I hit A, you'll see that these, you'll see these don't match anymore like we did before because that's because we have a different set of UV maps. And we'll see if we turn this one on. This is, you know, turn that on. This is what we were using before, right? So this is that space, you know, that's that. So you can start to see all the different parts and hit A. You see, we have these islands. See how big they are? And this is actually, a, this is actually might be a little, a little large. So I always come in here and check these UVs to make sure that they're uh, tight enough. As I look at this, I can see that these are some big gaps in here. So if I hit A, U, and smart UV projectors is what we're doing. I can, I might want to say the island margin might be something uh, a little bit smaller, like 0.01. Let's do that. Okay, so that makes it a little better, and I think that's going to work better for us for our for our mapping. Let's see, uh, maybe 0.02. Let's do 0.02. Let's go into the. Here's our UV map. So you can see, there's our map, and we've got these little little edges little blurry edges on on everything that looks really good another thing i can do at this point is a smart uv project i can scale to the bounds as well so that's going to give us even a little more resolution in here which i kind of like that 
just fine. So I'm going to go back one more time and I'm going to bake it one more time. Now I'll go into, back into UV editing and you can see that the bakes all, everything lines up nicely. So I'm going to call this material kiosk material. And if I want to apply it, I can just say, go in here and notice I can't select the kiosk material there. So I need to go into edit preferences and I'm going to go into bevel, find kiosk bevel. And under here, I'm going to basically say filter materials. I'll turn that off. And then I can come in here and there's kiosk. And then I can say generate material. And you can see now we have nice bevels along the edges of our object. Okay. So let's say we want to add a, kind of a chipped paint look to this. So we'll go to warm bevel. And if I hit the preview button here, you'll see it's a, a larger, kind of a larger area. So, and so now I basically want to go and say, bake the mask. So I'll hit the bake mask button and it'll go ahead and it'll use those same UVs to bake the mask. And now that's done. I can basically generate the material. Remember, if I don't have anything in here, it's going to, it's going to actually uh, use a steel, kind of a chipped steel material in here. So I'm going to hit this generate material again. And now you can see we have this kind of a rough texture. And I can come in here to this worn edge and I can start to adjust some of these things. Like if I want to, if I want to change the scratch width, you can see that, you know, it'll go from here to here. So I might, you know, move it up. I might leave it at one. And this is, you know, so I can, each one of these adjust something different. Scale. And brightness. So there, so we have that. So you can, so that works pretty good. Now, one thing that we don't have is we don't have any kind of roughness going on on this paint color. So let's fix that real quick. I'm gonna go back into my kiosk. There it is. And this is my image. And I'm gonna just, let's just grab these, move them over here, shift A, and we're gonna add a converter and we'll, we'll add what's called a color ramp. And we're gonna put that color into the roughness and then we'll grab the color from here into here and we can start to see that if i start moving this around i'm going to start to get this is going to be a little rougher or a little you know you can start to see what's going on in fact if i just hold Control shift and click on it so black is going to be shiny and white is going to be rough, right? So, so right now, all the all the stuff is black is going to be shiny. So I'm gonna I don't want it too shiny. In fact, I might just reverse it, just do it like this. So we'll make the black, you know, uh, the black stuff shiny. So let's try that, see what that does. But what I really want, yeah, I want to get a little of this stuff in here, something like that. Let's see what that does. Control Shift click on principled, and now we can kind of. Let's look at, you know, kind of look at the material and how it reflects off of there. You can kind of start to see there's a little, still a little shiny, but, uh, and if I want, I can basically, you know, take this object right here. Uh, I can uh, add another material for just this. So I go tab, select that face right there. And I'm going to just basically hit this and say, duplicate that, make a new material out of that. So that's going to keep all this stuff. I'm going to call this the display kiosk display. And with that done, let's go ahead and we're going to uh, turn, delete that, select this, tab into it. With this selected, we're going to go over here. Uh, we need to assign, uh, actually, this is kiosk. That's kiosk. And then we're going to add another slot and we're going to assign that material to it. And then we're going to call that kiosk display. Okay. And then the kiosk display, I'm going to turn the roughness all the way down to almost zero. So we're going to get a pretty good shine. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a clear coat on top of it. Okay. And then I think I'm going to punch out the contrast a little bit. Shift A color curves 
and we'll just drop it down like this. Here we go. Okay, so that's good. So that's more reflective. So now we have that working nicely. And uh, then once that's done, I can go back in here, select our object, and you know, just generate the material again. And there we have it. Now we may say, okay, that's a little, it's a little heavy. So let's just go ahead and make the scratch width just a little bit tighter. Yeah, just. Something like that. So we just don't don't have quite as much ruining. But notice notice how nice this is. Look 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 at the uh, the bump and everything. It looks looks pretty good. Okay. So now we've got this object. Now we can be done now if we want to. We can say we're done. We've got our object. We can save it as a kid ops object or whatever. But what if we want to convert this into a game object? So here's how we do that. Uh, real quickly is I'm going to uh, select this. And I'm going to use a product called Simple Bake. And Simple Bake you can get on Blender Market, and it's a great, uh, it's a great product. I mean, I, I use it for all kinds of stuff. But let's just show you real quickly how we will use that for this. So let's go ahead first and power save this. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll go down and I'll open the Cycles panel. I've got Simple Bake added as a uh, add-on. So you go in here, Simple Bake. Here it is. There. And it's got an update available, which is pretty cool, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to update right now, but it updates automatically directly inside the uh, inside the app. Really nice. So I'll go down here, tell me the updates available. And I'm going to walk through all of this stuff. So uh, I don't need any presets. Bake the object. I want to add that. So there's my box that I'm going to bake. Uh, the PBR, I want to get diffuse. I want uh, metalness. Do I have any metal? I don't think I have any metalness in this. If I, if I did... I would change that, but I don't. In fact, you know what? Yeah, there's no real metal. Oh, yeah, there is. There's metalness in this, in the, in the, uh, whatchamacallit. So, yeah, we definitely want the metalness. Then we want roughness. We want normal. So, we have all of that. <coughs> we don't need clear coat and clear coat roughness because that's part of this material up here. So, in fact, uh, if you notice, when we, when we assign that material, you know, when we did this, we, you know, we need, we need to go back here and basically add a new material and uh, assign it to that face again because we lost it when we uh, when we built that. So let's go ahead and uh, add the kiosk display. And now, yeah, now that's much better. So back to Simple Bake. Uh, it's, it's, by the way, it's in the cycles. You have to make sure that you're, you've got cycles set here or you won't see Simple Bake. Just want to let you know there. Um, so we've got rough, so all this is good. We don't need clear coat because clear coat's part of that material. Okay, let's go to Special Bakes, nothing in here, texture settings. Okay, so I'm gonna, I wanna bake this at 4K. But I'm going to output it at 2K. So what's what? Why, what does that mean? Well, it turns out in a lot of cases, Blender when it bakes, it doesn't use any aliasing. So if you bake something at 4K and then you downsample it to 2K, you're going to get basically virtual virtual anti-aliasing for your textures. So that's why I do it that way. So this is just going to be a 2K map. Export settings so we can export the mesh or and the bakes, but I don't want to do that. Uh, UV settings. I'm going to restore the originally active UV map at the end. So that UV map is the one that we're using. You know, as you recall, that's this one. We're going to restore that UV map at the end. And we're going to get rid of the other ones, by the way. So, and then, uh, so we don't have to worry about having two UV maps anymore. And then other settings. So this is important too. I want to copy objects and apply the bakes when I'm done. So then all I need to do is hit the bake button. And so when it bakes, it's going to tell me it's in progress, sample count now too. So it's going to just basically go through and, and it's going to render out the diffuse, all those different channels that we were looking at. It will render those out and you can kind of see that's what's going on here. It does this automatically much faster and simpler than if you had to set these up on your own inside the shader editor, which is possible to do, but this is just way, way, way better. So. Uh, we're at 75% complete. It tells you how, how how far we've gone. And now we're done. And now if I click on this, you'll see. It gives us a little gift. We don't need that. Um, but here, we've got, these are the maps. These are the maps. There's one diffuse map, a metalless map, and a roughness map. And so let's go ahead and power save this. 
and we want to make sure we save these maps. And yet, look how nice it looks. And it renders perfectly in Eevee with these nice bevels on it and, the, you know, textures and everything. And if I go and look in uh, the cycles, let's go ahead and change the uh, lighting model here. There. So we do look at it in cycles, you can see it looks really good here, too. So anyway, just uh, that's that's really it. You know, I can go into kit ops now and, and just say or just right click on it. You know, uh, go, let's go into something like um arch 2050 so that's all these things so i'll just right click on this kit ops whoops i'll just right click on say kit ops create insert use object origin or yeah that's fine so now kit ops will automatically there there's our object right there so and uh file new general and come in here we'll go to kit ops And add the insert. And there it is. Perfect insert. So, anyway, hope that helps. It's a fun little project, and uh, get you can get you excited about building some low poly game models. Okay, see you online. Thanks for watching. Bye.